Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we are discussing parental pressure. Abimbola Kunle Oshukunle is a banker turned jeweler, uh, designer in, and she's the founder of the um, of the of the company called Konopia. Is a, she's the creative director, and um, that that company provides finely crafted jewelry for women and of style. And she's been married. I mean, sorry, she's married and blessed with three children. And she's very passionate about um, children development. We also have Ogechi, um, aka Anya, who she is an award-winning journalist. She pioneered the development desk at The Cable and has specific interest in sustainable development goals, especially childhood and women issues. Ogechi was a 2017 Early Childhood Fellow of the International Center for Journalism. She currently works as the commissioning editor at the Conversation Africa. Now remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. I think whenever I'm excited, I'm in a hurry. I'm just <laughs> probably my script. All right, pardon my okay. my. <laughs> so um, do we have Abim Bola with us? Good evening. Okay, I think we're we're gonna join uh, Abim Bola soon. Um, Ogechi is is Ogechi there? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, Ogechi. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so we're discussing parental pressure. In your, in your assessment of pressure that parents, you know, have these days, where do you think this pressure is stemming from? Is it coming from, um, where is it coming from? I think I should just leave you to answer that. I mean, I don't have any straightforward, uh, straightforward answers or answers that are set in stone, but I just know for sure that um, we're over-parenting these days. There's a lot of, um, like you said, tiger mom parenting, over-parenting, wanting to make sure that your child or your children are set for life, uh, position them for um, just to take over the world. Do you know that kind of thing? You want to do that because you understand that if you don't parent strategically, you might, your children might lose out. So. I mean, so that's where the pressure is coming from. You want them to attend coding classes. You want them to play the keyboard. You want them to be part of an orchestra. You want them to do well academically. And that means that you have to be an involved parent because that's the only way that um, people now think that they can strategically position their children in the world that we exist in today. Okay. So, All right, so let me come to Abimbola um, quickly. Um, Abimbola, if you can hear me, is it is it wrong for a parent to want to uh, aspire for the child, you know, to be all that maybe they couldn't um, achieve? Because you have all the children. I yes, mean, my um, my kids are. Between, I have three kids, um, aged between ten to 10 seventeen. To 17, yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't think it's wrong for us to want to aspire for the best for our children, but I think it's very important to realize that each child is different and you cannot even and you can't parent every child exactly the same you can have the same principles in parenting the child but you have to study the child understand the um, the strengths the weaknesses the disposition and the person personality of each child and try to bring out the best in that now i may i may want my child to have what I didn't have, but then not to the detriment of that child. Hmm. So I think it's so important to balance everything because in the end, what you want is a wholesome human being, a wholesome adult. And um, you don't want to damage um, that child in the process of wanting what you want as exactly. a parent. Oh, so that's so my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, Ogechit has talked about... Um, parental pressure over parenting and at the same time she has also talked about um, academic uh, excellence parents taking their children to through different classes to ensure that they uh, perform very well academically now my question is this that aren't they doing this to ensure that the they the parents are doing this to ensure that they can actually brag to their friends that oh my child is actually doing this what is that in, <laughs> i think that's it to me because in some a lot context, of a, a lot of parents have bragging, bragging rights. rights yes they do that a lot <laughs> okay um parents want to brag to their to their friends yes, that my exactly. child is doing very well right i i would say yes for some parents 
right? But like not most. all the time. Like most. It's, it, <laughs> hello? It's yeah, go most. ahead. We yeah. can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so parents do want, some parents may want to brag because if a parent is struggling with their own self-identity, definitely they will get affirmed through a child doing very well. Okay, but then uh, that, that, that's a false sense of security. That's a truth. Okay, so the parents need, if, if, if a parent wants a child to do well because of bragging rights, that parent needs to examine herself and think, mm, you know, I may not be doing the right thing here because I think that's wrong. I think that the best thing to do is that the truth of the matter is that, okay, let me give you an example. I have three kids that are totally different, okay? And one of the things I have learned in my journey with my three kids is I am more focused on bringing, ensuring that child is doing, each child is doing their best hmm. than I am in saying, oh, you will get, um, getting straight A's, exactly. okay? So because, and, and I'll give you an example. My daughter is very driven, right? And um, some time ago, she, was, she came to my room in the evening. I was talking about how, she, she needs to keep getting her straight A's, otherwise we'll be upset with her. And she was putting herself under a lot of pressure and all that. And I had to tell her, auntie, I'm not, I'm not the reason for your, for your um, I, I, you shouldn't be pushing to get straight A's because of me. Exactly. You should be pushing to get straight A's because, because of, of yourself. yourself. Exactly. I will not love you any more or any less because whether you get straight A's or not. What I want to be sure of is that you're putting in your best and you're, you know, and that your own motives too are right. So mm. I think those things are so important because we must be careful not to bring up children that are so performance oriented that mm. the only way they measure their worth is how much they have performed in the academic. Absolutely. Okay, so we have a question. Let me okay. throw this to Dr. Morenike. What is the mm. root cause of parental pressure and what are the examples of parental pressure? That's from a viewer. Sorry, you... What's the what? What is the root cause of parental pressure and what are the examples of parental pressure? So maybe um, you should okay. ask, answer the root cause, then Ogechi would answer like the examples. Okay, the root cause of parental pressure, like we mentioned, um, are many. Um, for some parents, like you mentioned, some parents want to brag and they want their children. Some parents genuinely care about their children exactly. and they want them to do well. They want them to excel and they don't realize, they believe that they are supporting the child, not knowing that they are putting pressure on the child. Hmm. So the intention is good most of the time. Now, another um, cause is some parents want to brag, like you mentioned, you know, to friends, my child is doing well, my child is doing this and that. That's another, another thing is some parents, they are paying so much for fees, mm. especially when they put them in fees, um, schools where the fees is so enormous and they are, they are sweating it out. And they feel that I can't pay this much and you're not performing well, it's not possible. <laughs> <Okay>. right. mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's another reason. And so we have, like I mentioned in the title, we have a lot of reasons. Some parents, they themselves as children, mm -hmm. they, they, they something, something was wrong somewhere, mm. you know, so they, they're getting it wrong. Even them, such parents cannot deal with failure. So they are afraid to fail and they are afraid for their child to fail. Mm. And they cannot teach the child to handle failure. You know, so these are some of the reasons why, you know, we have parental pressure, you know. But I think a lot of parents, parents love their children, I believe, you know, and the intention most of the time is good, yeah, you know, yeah, and they don't realize succeed. where a genuine they place. are yes. yeah. between parental support and parental pressure. Mm. Okay, Dr. Moranika Bashar, um, yeah. how do we as parents ensure our own personal growth? Because most of the time, all your attention is on the children, forgetting yourself. So as a parent, how do you also ensure that you're having a balanced life? What's so you don't, you don't that? look back and say that yes. I didn't achieve anything. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think everybody should say something to this Every, question. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, for, for me, with four kids, I, I try to just um, focus on me. And I think one thing for me as well is this. Um, as much as I'm, I want my kids to do well, I'm supporting them and all of that, I don't want to forget about myself. Because for me, as a person, I'm even afraid of midlife crisis. I don't want to get to a certain age, then I look back and I wonder what is going on with me. So it's important that while we are raising children, we should not forget our own purpose. 
So we should ensure that we don't forget ourselves because it is when you are in a good, when you are emotionally balanced, when you're doing well, when you're achieving well, when you're fulfilled, that's when you can give the best of yourself to your children. Okay. When you're not doing well with yourself, it's difficult to give the best of yourself to anybody, mm -hmm. not even your children. Okay. So let's go to Ogechi. Ogechi, you had a question pending about examples of parental pressure and what Lami asked, you know. Um, what did Lami ask, please? Um, personal you know, growth, how the to personal find growth. a balance. Yes, how to find a balance to ensure that you're... Uh, okay. I'm not sure about how to create a balance. I think that this question pops up a lot, especially to mothers. You know, you want to find out how to create a work-life balance, how to make sure that you're not forgetting yourself, you have an identity besides um, being a mom or being a parent. Um, it's a tough question for me to answer. But I would say, first of all, that you need a, a support system. You need a solid support system to be with you, to parent with you, that share your values, uh, your values and your value system. And in so doing, you know, sometimes you delegate some of the things that uh, you would ordinarily want to take on yourself. You need, um, the thing is, for us here in, in Nigeria, I know that this culture is changing. We have an extended family. We have grandma. We have grandpa, we have our grandparents to help, you know. So I think that we should utilize this, um, so these resources that we have. We utilize this extended family system, this support, delegate a little more than we would like to because you see these children will be okay, especially if you are able to get a buy-in into your value system. Exactly. It's important to have a solid support system. It's important to also delegate the things that are not necessary. You see this whole super mom title where you want to cook, right. clean, do all of, take up all these responsibilities. You know, it can be too much. Yeah. If you can afford it, outsource some of these things so that Absolutely. you can focus on yourself and the child that you brought to the world. All right. So, so these are the things. Yeah. All right. So Abimbola, quickly, um, what would you say to that uh, uh, Lamis uh, comment? Okay. Question. About um, self-development, right? I yes. Think, um, it's very important to realize, first of all, that you cannot pour from an empty pot or an empty bucket. Mm. So for you to be your best as a mom, as a parent, you must first of all take care of yourself. Another thing is that we cannot afford to define ourselves only as moms. One of the things I try to do for myself is I continue to remind myself that I am an individual. You know, apart from being a mom, a wife, a daughter to, you know, or a sibling, I am just me. And I relate to myself on that level and ask myself what I would do for myself to build myself up. Because, and you know, another thing we must also realize regarding that is that they're watching us. We're modeling how to parent to them, you know, exactly. and but when we do it right, or at least when, when they see us um, taking care of ourselves, putting ourselves first when we can, you know, then they're also learning about the importance of taking care of themselves as they grow older as well. You know, and um, and I think that those are things that um, we, which I try to do. <laughs> okay. You, okay. Okay. So, um, what about? Let's go back a bit to uh, parental pressure and career choices. Okay. We we know the story of Faust when he went to when he studied law, and at the end of the day, he decided, oh, I don't want to do law anymore. I want to concentrate on my own passion. So this is my question. How does um, parental pressure have an adverse role on um, the choices we make in our careers? Or, do, or, or do the children's think, choices? How, do, how should parents mm -hmm. guide? Or is that what exactly. You? How can okay. parents guide the children? OK. Is that question for me? Yeah, you can go ahead, Abimbo. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. How can um how can parents guide their children mm -hmm. in career choices? Exactly. First, we can't live our lives through our children. Mm -hmm. Um, we can guide, but as they grow older, we must also realize that they have their own life, they have their own journey. But having said that, that's what it's so it's easier to say than done. It's, it's easier said than done. Okay, I have a son that likes to sing. He's, my son is 17. He likes to write music and all that. Okay, so what we do is, and my daughter likes to, she's a very good artist. Mm -hmm. one, of, what, what I'm, one of the things that now, basically this is a journey I'm walking right now. So while I do not want him to go and become 
a musician without going to school, mm -hmm. I ensure that I continue to encourage him in his love for music, in her love for the art, while at the same time letting them know that these things are not like easy way out of, your, of the academics. So I think it's important to also realize that it's a continual journey. Your children must also know at every point in time that they have our support and that they are not less because of a career choice they make. But our, our choice as per our role as parents is to guide and to lead because they must also realize they're children, they're young, they don't have experience. But so we nurture both. Uh, we don't, you, don't, you don't want to kill their passion, their fire, but you must help them to direct it. All right, so Thanks. I have a comment here from um, a viewer. It says, I totally agree with Dr. Moreneke. A lot of parents these days put their kids under so much pressure, especially in the areas of sports and talent. A lot of times the kids are not even interested in some of these things, but the parents just keep pushing them, and this can be counterproductive. So Moreneke, um, that's a comment for you, a, a viewer agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. But I want us to bring it down to financial pressure. Right, because we cannot we cannot talk about all of these things without happening on finances. You know, a lot of times parents are under so much pressure, right, financially, and it also takes a toll on the the way they also parent their children. You know, and sometimes they lose certain kind of values in the process. You know, just because of the pressure from the financial point of uh, point. So, what would you say to parents? You know that, you know, how do they manage the pressure that comes with financing? Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I had the <you>. hook. <laughs> okay, um, okay let, me, let me answer that. Um, I, I'll say that we're all different people okay. and the way, we, um, the way we respond to situation is different. But one thing that is important is, um, like Abimala mentioned, that we need to understand that we are different things. We are we are wearing different hats. I'm a mother. I'm a parent. I need to be an intentional parent. Um, if I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I own a business. My business will go up and to have challenges up and down. I need to face that. I think parents should just need to try. It, it's difficult to speak. Some parents will tell you that it's easier said than done. But these are things that I've been through, you know. And for me, it's about I, I can mix these two together because if you look at the effect, the long term effect, you cannot afford to leave your children for a period of time and face something else. Because by the time you come back, what you're going to meet is a whole lot of work. Hmm. You know, so you can't. So parents need to understand that these children are yours, right? You need to be parents to them. You need to be an intentional parent to them. Hmm. You will be an entrepreneur or you will work for someone, an employee or something. You will have a business or work. There are two different things. So you should be able. You should, we should learn to try to balance to and know where to, where the different yeah. hats that mm. we have. That that that's what I'll say. But mm. for me, I try to try a balance. You know, right. when I'm home, I'm tired. I know every day. I know that I have to connect with my children. Right. I have to okay. communicate with them. All right. I come home and I have to connect, and I think that is it. That's so true, um, Doctor America. But what do you think? You know, with mm. with pressure, uh, how what kind I would, of pressure? Yeah. No, no financial pressure because you can't take it away. A lot of times, right? Sometimes a lot of parents don't even let their children know they are broke. Mm. How, how do you explain that to They your don't children? even let them know. Yes, they are that, demanding that for this things is so, you can't afford. And you know, sometimes, okay, so for, for instance, my parents now, when we were growing up, they had to work, like, because they were both entrepreneurs, you know, they had to work from morning all the way. Sometimes my mom would come in so late, you know, my, with my dad as well. Mm -hmm. We were left all by ourselves. But you see, imagine if there was that explanation to understand, okay, this is how, why. So We're in your it. mind as a child, you don't know whether mommy and daddy, they are, they are slaving because they need to pay your school fees, they need to do all of these things. Well, and we're not I, able to communicate that pressure. I, I will still, I'll take an exception to that. In my own case, I had that um, opportunity for my parents to be able to give me a breakdown of, okay, this is how the financial status is. This is what we are supposed to do. This is what we are earning. This is what it, the plan is. is, it, is so it comu because of time? communication is mm. essential for parents. That's what I'm doing. Is the but point, you know, is for my the point I'm father, making? Yeah. For my father, the only way I used to know when things are a bit down is, he goes, oh, 
aggressive, aggressive in the house. Bad, no. Yeah. Because that that's is a, that is the pressure playing out there. Yes. But they are not able you to tell come you. come out to tell us. Thank you. That's the point I'm making, Isi. I'm saying mm -hmm. that imagine if parents are able to sit their children down to say, you know what, at this point where we are at, because now mm -hmm. we're talking about schools, how different parents will now want to out, out, outshine I'll another shine parent, the other. you know, you know, you know, you want to outshine another parent with party packs, with so many things. Exactly. In the end, it is not about the child anymore. It is now, it is now I want to That's show off. Right you know, yes, I want about. to now show off that I am a happening parent. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, so it goes goes to your... Then, the, then, another thing, Uwa, mm -hmm. do you think parents, how do we strike a balance between I, for one, I don't believe I have to be my daughter's friend. Mm. I am. I believe I am a parent first. Before then, you are the friend. The, exactly. No, I'm not even a friend. Okay. I'm just friendly. <laughs> I think, to I my think we'll take final comments from all our guests today. So we'll start with Abin Bola. Mm. You know, Abin Bola, what do you think? If you were to give an advice to a parent out there, you know, what would you say to that parent? You know, trying to regarding being a friend. Yes. No, not even being a friend. Trying to just take off oh. that pressure away, you know, because we know that these pressures exist. Well, one quick nugget. I would say, okay, so what I would say to a parent mm -hmm. to just reduce the pressure on themselves is, mm -hmm. first of all, realize that um, parenting is a journey, it's a long-term journey. Mm -hmm. And what we want to create at the end of the day, we are trying to, we want wholesome children, okay, that mm -hmm. become wholesome adults. Absolutely. The journey is a continual journey of balance, and we must never forget that. So if we, if we drop the ball at some point, let's remember to pick it up and move on, mm -hmm. um, learn the lesson. Okay. It's important that we also continue to have open conversations with our children. Hmm. They see way more than we know hmm. that they exactly. see. Exactly. Even if we don't talk. Hmm. Okay? So exactly. we must continue to have open conversations. Like the financial thing you were talking about earlier. It's important if we, if for example, you're having a financial issue. The truth is, they probably suspect already. So maybe you may want to just have a especially and when they're, maybe they're older have a conversation with them and tell them we can't do this right now because of so so mm. so because they also make them to realize that this is the reality of life okay Absolutely. you don't want children that think like look at life through rose tinted glasses and they think everything is you know all because such children tend to not be resilient and all that Absolutely. so you know so so those are things have open conversations and um and 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 um, realize that it's a continual journey. All right. So, so Ogechi, okay, quickly, just in one minute, because we will run out of time. Ogechi, okay, so what would you say to a parent out there? You know, just to distress. Don't don't put yourself under that pressure. What would you advise? I would say um, I I don't know what I would say, but I would say first of all, parenting is very sacrificial. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that once you embark, once you embark on that journey, sometimes you lose yourself, and it's frankly i think that it's not it's, it's okay mm. because you're a parent and you've evolved into if, if you have if you have multiple identities now and that you should sit you should sit in that identity and enjoy it in terms of parental pressure i i, I usually would say delegate the things that are not important read with your child make them enjoy their childhood be kind to them i think it's very important to be kind to our children I understand that people sometimes don't want to be best friends with their children that's okay but you mustn't forget that kindness is essential in parenting. Absolutely. Sometimes we're too harsh on these children. We have unrealistic expectations for them. We don't provide the support we need for the amount of pressure they need for the amount of pressure that we put on them. And you know, so then there will be a disconnect and end up rebellion. But I know that in all of this, what is essential is kindness in your parenting. Journey. Absolutely. It's kindness in the way you put them. Um, with parental pressures, I'm not. A, I'm, I cannot call myself a parenting expert. I know that sometimes you find a balance, sometimes there will be no balance. But go with the flow and take it one day at a time. Absolutely. And at every point in time, ensure that you are consciously and you are, yeah, and that you are deliberately parenting. That's really what I All right, so quickly, Ike, we're running out of time. <laughs> Marenike, quickly, so what would you say to a parent out there? All right, I'll, okay, I'll tell parents that they should press to breathe. They should understand, try to understand their children, connect with them. Teach their children mm. to accept mm. failure. That it's okay. Mm. You know, it's part of the process. Mm. They should help their children nurture their strength. You know, they should help them nurture their strength and they shouldn't force things on the children. 
ensure that the child is happy and they, you know, they are fulfilled with whatever that they are pursuing. That's most important. Absolutely. And they should pay attention to when they are crossing the line from parental support to parental pressure. Thank you so much. You know, quickly, John says, I think more focus should be building self-esteem in children. If I says we need to raise children that are content, then someone is saying, in my opinion, uh, financial pressure is also a tough aspect of modeling. How to deal with how to work with what you have, because they are all watching. So you two have to deal with what you, what, what you have. I think that is all we can take. <laughs> Hey. Oh my goodness, I'm running. <laughs> Alright, so please, please, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. You don't want to miss this. It's been an insightful conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Morenike. Thank you, Ambim Bola, and thank you, Gechi. Um, keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as so we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, let me take a breather. Here it is again. You need it. <laughs> we have a sense that if we are exceptional parents, we will automatically produce exceptional children. It's unrealistic thinking and it, is, it puts unbearable pressure on the child and the parent. So please, let's be realistic. <laughs> absolutely thank you so much ladies i hope thank you had fun you. absolutely absolutely <laughs> we, we have we a lot have to talk so about time. but it's okay <laughs> it's fine we'll be fine we'll see you guys on friday <laughs> All right. bye and stay safe <laughs>